Welcome to London, Wissam. It has been a pleasure to have invited you to the team of studios here on behalf of the European. Well done on your two accolades. Um, best CEO in the FMCG and branded supplier of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank well you. Well done. Thank you very much. This is a, a great recognition for me and for my team. They've been working very hard. So I'll go back home with this prize and make them very happy. It has been quite an achievement. Well done. Thank you very much. Since the Webcore Group was created in 1978, founded by the entrepreneur Ian Nesser, they followed a path of sustained growth that's also made them one of Africa's leading players in the agricultural commodities and the so-called FMCG business line. So what is FMCG? It stands for Fast Moving Consumer Goods. Hold that thought because this result has been achieved through a conviction put into practice every day that experience must be indistinguishable from quality and dimension should always be associated with effectiveness. They have a worldwide presence and over 3,500 dedicated employees responsible for thousands of daily operations. Well, this worldwide dimension of Webcore Group, which is primarily in Africa, is the result of an accumulated experience of almost three decades managing a wide portfolio of leading brands, products and services. Well, the Webcore Group has recently been awarded Branded Supplier of the Year and their CEO, Wissam Nessa, has just been awarded the best CEO in the FMCG. And I'm delighted to say that he joins us for our interview today. A very good day to you. Congratulations. Many Thank achievements. You. We'll look at those later. But in terms of what Webcore Group has been doing in Africa, how has business been progressing? And more to the point, how well are African consumers responding to international brands? So we have had a very great journey the last 40 years in, uh, in Africa. Uh, Webcore Group is a company that was born in Africa. Uh, it started in Africa, so its understanding of the markets and of uh, the business in Africa is what made it be what it is today. The multinationals or the international brands that have invested into uh, the African market, uh, especially the ones that have looked at the consumer, the understanding of the consumer behavior in Africa, have done uh, very well. They are very happy about the outcome. Uh, companies like uh, Danone, like uh, uh, Unilever, are companies that have focused a lot on Africa and on the African consumer, and they're one of those uh, great leaders in their segment. Uh, so I think that, uh, that uh, more and more brands will also give this attention to the African market, as you know, we call it the, lost, uh, the last horizon. Uh, so they want more markets, and this is probably where they would probably want to come and invest. And in, in terms of the numbers game, I mean, it's quite astonishing. You've got about 3,500 employees, mainly in Africa, understandable because that is your heartland, and also more than 50 brands. So in terms of the challenges on building a leading food company in this region, what would you say they are? Because I would imagine they're extremely diverse. Absolutely. Actually, you, you mentioned the challenge by saying uh, 3,500 employees. Uh, working in nascent markets, um, we uh, the, the, the main challenge is human resources. Uh, attracting talent to that area is not very easy. Uh, we have uh, worked a lot to change that by creating a, um, our own academy to train people and get them ready for these challenges uh, and for the profession of distribution, of manufacturing in these countries. Uh, we also have uh, adopted uh, uh, or invested a lot into human resources through uh, other trainings, sending them out to learn, uh, bringing international companies to bring those expertise into, the, uh, into our business. And this is how we've been able to overcome those challenges. And I guess it makes it easy as well to keep the staff because you've really nurtured them once you've identified Absolutely. that talent. That's also, of course, a challenge, retaining people after they've become you know, an expert at what they do knowing that a lot of other companies want to come back and invest in these countries and, you know, the best place to find people is in other people's companies. Mm. But, yes, we've done very well also retaining our, our team members. And, and clearly the staff do feel very loyal to the company as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, okay, I mean, we were talking there about the food industry because that's where the, the main brands, etc., have been built up. But, I mean, what else does your company invest in? Because a, a group this big can't really restrict itself to one zone, can it? Absolutely not. You see, the strength of uh, our business and throughout the last two decades, we've been investing into a value chain where the expertise from origination 
of the products all the way to distributing them, all the way to retailing to the consumer uh, is you know, a, a business that covers all, all these expertise. So um, as a food company, uh, it is a nonstop investment into businesses related to food where we optimize our pricing or our cost of goods sold. And that's investing in agriculture, that's investing into supermarkets, investing into wholesale, investing into infrastructure, you know, technology, whatever that brings back into that core business to be more and more competitive into the markets where we distribute our products. So it's the whole gamut. It's, it's incredibly holistic in that sense, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. The focus of the distribution or of the products mostly is in Africa. Uh, specifically, the group has invested in sub-Saharan Africa, Congo, Angola, Mozambique, those countries, uh, and with agents in other countries that distribute our products as well. But uh, the specialty of the group today is dominating the brand building part of the business. Mm. And how do, you uh, how do you handle the supply chain management? Because again, it's such a big business, this ginormous footprint. Yes. So how do you handle that? Because it's obviously things are being moved from, from different areas around the continent and beyond. So yes, so we've segmented the business in speci with spe different specialties, right? So fast moving consumer good is only one part of the business. F uh, uh, agricultural commodities is another part of the business. And uh, managing the supply chain and its sophistication is basically, we've been very successful because we've invested in putting teams that are specialized in different countries where we source these specific products. And of course, technolo without technology, it would be a limitation. So technology, uh, the, the, the right systems have brought this whole management structure to be able to respond to this challenge. So it's, it's joined up supply chain management because not every company is good at that. That's where some of them fall. Absolutely. This is where you lose money and you make money, having a very efficient supply chain. And uh, look, I mean, you are a trusted brand, not just in Africa, but beyond. So how do you maintain that? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's got to be with the consumers. They've got to feel that they can trust you. So that's quite important. What do you do to actually say, look, stay with us? Absolutely. You know, as I mentioned, we work in nascent markets, but yet uh, our company has been very uh, sincere about bringing international business standards into Africa and into our business. And this is very satisfactory for all our partners and all our suppliers. So that being always in evolution has interested our partners to always be with us, knowing that they're in safe hands and that their brands are being built very professionally. Uh, continuous investment into infrastructure allows that these brands see continuous growth in their, in their, in, with their products. Okay. So this is how we will continue to attract these guys and make sure that we continue to be partners. And of course, relationship with them also is uh, something that we've invested uh, many years of uh, time and, uh, and eventually we are seeing changes in management, uh, changes in people, yet the companies are, you know, very solid partnerships with us. Mm. Well, clearly you're doing something right, mm. because you personally have uh, won this award, Best CEO in the FMCG, and also the company has been named Branded Supplier of the Year, so many congratulations on both achievements. But in terms of the Branded Supplier of the Year award, what do you think this does towards consolidating those efforts towards getting that recognition? What does it bring to the business? Well, you know, this recognition is, uh, is, a, is a huge achievement. And, you know, after, uh, from three years ago, uh, lots of the oil-dependent economies have had a very difficult crisis at the drop of the oil prices. And there's been a lot of inflation, devaluation, and, you know, I think we've been managing together with the team a very difficult time. Uh, a, diffi a difficult time where, um, uh, you know, it is not the norm, it is not... Uh, you know, we haven't done necessarily uh, what we usually do. So we've been in a crisis mode. And as being in a crisis mode, the hard work that has been done for the last three years to show growth and now ending up with a nice award like this is a great recognition for all the team to think that somebody has, you know, they've spotted us as doing the right thing. So given all of that, what are the plans for 2018? Where do you think you'll be if we're talking at the end of 2018? So, yes, so 2018, you know, uh, we have reviewed at the beginning of, at the end of last year, beginning this year, we have reviewed our 10-year business plan. And uh, we are extremely convinced that the future of Africa is local production in Africa. 
Uh, this is where we want to invest even further, local industry, uh, local agriculture. Uh, all these countries that are today uh, been very dependent into imports of other products are now, uh, especially after this latest crisis, uh, want to create self-dependent uh, uh, economies. And we have been working together with governments that will support us uh, investing into local production. We've been also convincing our partners internationally uh, to invest with us in those countries so we can preserve the brands and continue growth. So 2018 was the beginning of, uh, let's say, manufacturing, uh, uh, manufacturing era for us. And uh, hopefully, you know, we see each other once again in a year, and I can tell you much more about how much industries and how much manufacturing we've been in involved in. Okay, and we look forward to hearing that. But uh, Wissa and Nesla, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you And once very again, much. congratulations on those awards. Much deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you.